If you're bearish on a stock index or ETF and expect a sharp downward move, you might consider a long put strategy for a purely directional trade. If you're right, you could make a profit. However, if you're wrong, it's likely you'll have a loss. But being wrong on direction doesn't necessarily mean you're going to lose money if you use other types of option strategies. One of those is the putback spread. First, the goal of the putback spread is to set up the strategy as a no-cost trade, whereby an investor creates a ratio of one short put and two lower strike long puts. This is a one by two ratio back spread. The idea is to pay for the two long puts with one short put. In this way, the investor enters the trade for little cost and sometimes maybe even a credit. By design, the short put loses as the underlying moves lower. However, the combination of the two long puts will typically offset the losses in the short put and eventually the position acts like 100 shares short of the underlying stock if the move is large enough and lower than the strike where the two long puts are struck. The idea is that if you are wrong on market direction and the stock remains above the strike price of the short put, you break even. Or in the case of taking a credit at the onset of the trade, might even profit a little. However, be aware that a moderate move lower the underlying can be problematic for this trade. Let's look at an example. Suppose XYZ is trading at $44 and an investor thinks it's headed lower. Using the options that expire in 90 days, the investor creates a putback spread by selling one 40 strike put for a credit of $3 and buying two 35 strike puts for a debit of $1.50 each for a net cost of zero. So what happens next? The best case scenario is that the stock moves sharply lower and trades below the price where the long two puts are struck, in this case $35. Suppose after six weeks, XYZ has dropped to $30. The 40 put sold for $3 has jumped in value to $11, which is a loss of $8. However, the 35 puts purchased for $1.50 are now worth $7.50 each. $6 higher than when they were purchased. Since the investor owns two, the profit on the long puts is $12. Subtract the $8 loss in the short put from the $12 gain in the long puts, and you have a profit of $4, or $400 per back spread. What happens if XYZ moves higher instead? Suppose XYZ moves higher to $50, as XYZ moves higher, all of the put values drop, and at expiration, both the 40 and 35 puts are going to expire without value. Since it didn't cost any money to place the trade, there won't be any loss when the options expire without value. The investor might even be able to close the trade before expiration without losing money. Despite the underlying moving higher instead, as was initially thought, in fact, one of the best features of this trade is that as long as XYZ stays above the strike price of the put that was sold, which is $40 in this case, then unlike the long put at expiration, the trade won't lose money. That's not to say that the trade doesn't have risk. If XYZ drops to the strike price of the option you bought, $35 in this case, and the investor holds the trade all the way until expiration, then the loss will be $5 from the one put sold without making money on the two puts that were bought. Your total loss is $500 per back spread. To avoid this worst case scenario, an investor might want to use options that have a lot of time built into them and simply close the trade well before expiration arrives. While being wrong on which way a stock index or ETF is going to move is inevitable, it doesn't mean an investor necessarily has to lose money if a putback spread is used. To learn more about the putback spread and other strategies, visit the OIC website at optionseducation.org.